Take good notes today, because I've got my eye on you. That's right, today we're talking about ions and oxidation states. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Coming At Ya. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So Fu, in the last episode, we talked a lot about the organization of the periodic table. Yeah, and in today's episode, we're gonna focus on the difference between metals and nonmetals. So let's get started. Ions and oxidation states, a lesson from the periodic table unit. Intro to oxidation states. The charge of an atom in a compound is called its oxidation state, or oxidation number. For ions, the charge listed is the oxidation state. Selected oxidation states can be found in the upper right for each element on the periodic table. So if we take a look at the key, which is the same key found in your periodic table, we see that the oxidation states of carbon can be negative four, plus two, or plus four. Note that they are called selected oxidation states, so other oxidation states are possible. Since elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons, they tend to react similarly and have similar oxidation states. For example, if you look at the column of elements that we have on the right here, this is group one, this is the alkali metals. They all have a plus one oxidation state. And if you look at that last electron shell, they all have one valence electron. Let's begin with metals. Metals tend to lose electrons to obtain a stable noble gas electron configuration. They form positive ions, which are smaller than their parent atoms due to going down an energy level. So if you take a look at the two images we have at the bottom here, the one on the left is sodium from your periodic table. Now it has an electron configuration of 281. It has one valence electron. Now, to become like a noble gas, it can either lose one to have that eight that's there in the second shell, or it can gain seven to have a total of eight in the third shell. It's much easier to lose that one. So to show this in diagram form, if you look at the image on the right, we have the sodium atom, which is 281, and showing that one dot in the third shell. Now, when it becomes an ion to lose that one electron, it loses that shell, it ends up becoming smaller and has a plus one charge. So a sodium ion walks into a bar and yells to the bartender, oh my gosh, I've lost an electron. Bartender says, are you sure? Sodium ion says, I'm positive. <laughs> Nonmetals. They tend to gain electrons to obtain a stable noble gas electron configuration. They form negative ions, which are larger than their parent atoms due to the extra electron repulsion in the same energy level. Taking a look at the two pictures below, let's focus in on the fluorine on the left from your periodic table. Fluorine has an electron configuration of 2,7. Now it can either lose seven valence electrons and have a first full shell with two, or it can gain one valence electron and have a stable configuration with two, eight. It's actually much easier for it to gain one valence electron. If we take a look at the pictures over on the right, we see the fluorine atom and the fluoride ion. The fluorine atom, again, is two, seven. When it gains that one electron, it becomes two, eight and has a negative charge. Now, that additional electron creates what we call electron repulsion. This is due to the fact that like charges repel each other. So although we're not gaining an extra shell, we're still in the same shell, those like charges coming together makes it get just a little bit bigger. All right, we're gonna do an example here. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, explain how the charge and size change when magnesium becomes an ion. All right, so when atoms become ions, it's due to their electrons. So we're gonna look up magnesium and its electron configuration on our periodic table. All right, so magnesium is Mg. Good. I know that. And if I look it up on my periodic table, its electron configuration is two, eight, two. Perfect. All right, so let's apply what we just learned. What type of element is magnesium? Uh, magnesium is a metal. Okay, and just so we can reiterate here, how do we know it's a metal? 
Uh, it's over on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Perfect. All right, so what do metals tend to do with electrons? Um, metals tend to lose, not gain, electrons. All right, good. So if magnesium is going to lose electrons, it has to form a noble gas configuration. Typically, that's eight in its outer shell. So what might it look like if it's going to lose electrons? Well, we could get it down to 2A, which would mean I'd have to lose these valence electrons. Yes, that's right. All right, so um, I'd be 2A now. Good. And I would have a charge, right? It's an yeah. ion. So how many electrons did we lose total? Well, we lost two electrons. Okay, so it was neutral before. It lost two electrons. What's the charge on electrons? They're negative, so I'm losing negative. Okay, so you're losing two negatives. So what would that make your overall charge? I'd have to have more protons and electrons now, so I'd be plus two. That's right, so magnesium has a plus two. So one last step here, let's compare the size before and after losing those electrons. All right, so for the first one, it looks like I have one, two, three energy levels, yep. right? And then after losing, now I only have two energy levels. I went down an energy level, so this ion should have a, a smaller size, right? Yeah, it's pretty obvious with the metals there, right? Yes, so smaller size lost an energy level. Good job. You try number one, explain how the charge and size change when sulfur becomes an ion. Now be careful here, sulfur is a non-metal, so your explanation might be a little bit different than ours from the previous example. Chemical formulas and the periodic table. A chemical formula shows the elements in a compound with a subscript denoting how many atoms or ions are present. Because a compound should be neutral, the oxidation states must cancel each other out. Information about oxidation numbers and thus group numbers can be determined from these formulas, as we'll see in a bit. Mendeleev used formulas involving oxygen called oxides to determine patterns on his periodic table. So don't worry too much about those subscripts and getting proper formulas just yet. We will cover that in a future unit. It's important to put oxide formulas in here with this unit on the periodic table because Mendeleev, he used oxide formulas to group elements based on the way they reacted with oxygen. Let's do an example. Fu, are you ready? I am. All right. The formula for an oxide is M2O, where M is an unknown metal, so not a real element found on your periodic table. What group is M in? All right, well, much like Mendeleev used oxides to put his different elements in groups, we're gonna kinda do the same thing. What we're gonna need then are oxidation numbers, okay? Right. So we're gonna be looking up some oxidation numbers and we're gonna be determining the oxidation number specifically of this unknown metal M, and that's gonna help us figure out what group it belongs in. Okay, okay. so let's write down that formula first. All right, so it's M2. Oh. All right, so again, we don't know the oxidation state of metal M because it's not a real element, but oxygen is a real element, so let's take a look at our periodic table. All right, so oxygen is right there. Yes. Okay, and its oxidation state is negative two. There's only one. Yeah, many of the other elements around it have many different oxidation states listed, but we're pretty sure in this case that oxygen is gonna be negative two. Okay, so oxygen's negative two, so I just <clears throat> write that up as it's charge up here in the upper right. Sounds good. That's negative two, okay. All right, now how many oxygens do we have in this formula? Uh, there's only one. Right, so there's oxygen. no subscript of one, but it's an assumed one. So okay. let's kind of show our work below our sort of total charges. So if I have one, oxygen with a negative two charge. What's my total negative charge? Okay, so I'll write that right below uh, oxygen is negative two. Good, now if this is a compound, what should its overall charge be? All right, so they have to cancel each other out and add up to zero, right? Good. So it's gotta all equal zero. So, so okay, so down here is kind of like my work, right? Yep. So my total charge. Good, with the oxidation states up at the top. So what's my total charge? of metal M have to be? Well, since the total from oxygen is negative two, you need a plus two to cancel it out, right? Very good. So plus two minus two equals zero. Very good. Now a little trick here, the total charge of both metal ions is plus two. 
we want the oxidation state of an individual ion. So if I have two metals with a total charge of plus two, what would be the oxidation state for just one? Well, there's two of them out of the plus two. Each one must be plus one, right? Very good. All right. So that actually means that the oxidation state of M isn't plus two, but instead it is plus one. Now, if you remember, our final goal here was to determine what group metal M is in. So oh. using that plus one charge, let's go back to our periodic table. Okay. Let me zoom back out here. All right, so what group always has a plus one charge for its oxidation number? Ah, I see. If you take a look at group one here, every single one has got a plus one charge. So M must be in group one. Very good. You try number two. If the formula for an oxide is MO, what group is M in? Please use the same method that we used in the previous example. Transition metals, groups 3 through 12, can have multiple oxidation states, and you may have to figure out which one it is. All right, we're going to do an example here. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, what is the oxidation number of iron in Fe2O3? All right, so first thing we're going to do is look up iron on our periodic table. All right, iron's right in the middle. All right, so what do we notice about iron? Well, it looks like it can be plus two or plus three for its oxidation state. Good, transition metals often have multiple oxidation states. We're gonna figure out which one it is, all right? So we don't know what the oxidation state is of iron, but we're gonna look at our other ion in the formula, which is oxygen. So what's oxygen? All right, so moving over to oxygen, I see that it's only listed as negative two. Good, and oxygen's almost always negative two. It's an almost certainty here. So let's go back to our formula. Okay. And we know of Fe2O3 that the oxidation state of oxygen is negative two. All right, so I'll put that up top. Good, so what's our total negative charge that oxygen gives us here? Well, there's three negative two, so I can multiply and my total negative charge would be minus six. I'm gonna write that at the bottom. Good. And remember, this is a chemical formula. It's neutral, so what's it all have to add up to? So we want everything to add up to zero. Good, so if I have a negative six so far, what's my total positive have to It's be? gotta be plus six to add up to zero. Makes sense, all right. So in this formula, how many irons do I have? Well, there's two of them from the subscript. Okay, so if there are two, and they both have to have a total overall charge of positive six, how, what's the oxidation state of each one? Well, I know that three times two is six, so they each have to be plus three. And that's Good. my oxidation number for iron. You try number three. What is the oxidation number of vanadium in V2O5? Please use the same method we just did in the previous example. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode on ions and oxidation states. Later, nerds. Today's episode is brought to you by Timmy Campion's Ventriloquist University. Learn the art of throwing your voice from America's youngest master ventriloquist. As seen on America's Got Skills. But we never off, we zone to the brick of dawn. S-C-I-E-N-C-E -E -E in the hall they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.